quickly before I get into the video, if you could drop a like on the video right now, that would be much appreciated. I make content like this like six to seven times a week and liking the video really helps out a lot. So that would be appreciated. Also consider subbing to the channel. I'm trying to hit 10K by the end of the month. So if you could do that, that would help as well. Other than that, let's get into the video. It's rumored that the Detroit Pistons have significant interest in one of the Ball Brothers and that one is yet to be drafted. That's LaMelo Ball, who is expected to be a top three, top four pick in the draft. And people think the Pistons have significant interest, not only because they need a franchise point guard, but they were one of the teams that attended his workouts. I think it was the Timberwolves, the Warriors, and the Hornets, I believe, maybe the Bulls, but I know it was the Timberwolves and the Warriors and then the Pistons, which is a bit weird considering you have the top two teams in the draft, but we're not going to talk about LaMelo, not much at least. We'll talk about him a bit later. I think the Pistons should actually make a move for the other ball brother because I think he's a perfect fit, and I think you might be able to get him at a pretty good price given what I've heard out of New Orleans and just given everything regarding Lonzo at this point in his career, but I think he's the perfect fit for the Pistons, and I think they should do everything to try to make a trade for him before they actually try to move up in the draft, in my opinion, and I'll let you know why. Now, the reason I think the Pistons might be able to get Lonzo out of New Orleans is because Stan Van Gundy came up with some very interesting comments when asked about Lonzo and Zach Lowe's podcast. This was before he was a coach, but they're kind of weird comments. He said, as you mentioned, they've got ball handling parts and pieces. He doesn't need to facilitate everything in the half court. And I almost think if everything goes right, you can run your half court offense through Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and Drew Holiday with some catch and shoot movement stuff for JJ Redick in the half court. What's the problem if Lonzo becomes mainly a standstill shooter? I think that's what you do as a coach is you look to people's strengths and you put it together. Now, I'm no expert. I'm no NBA coach, but I wouldn't say Lonzo's strengths are just shooting. I think he's improved significantly, and we'll talk about that because that's key to why the Pistons would want to pick him up. But I don't know if he'd be exactly ecstatic with being a standstill shooter in the half court. Now, obviously, this is saying Lonzo would have a lot of rain in the full court transition play like he always has. But I think he's someone you'd still want running your offense in the half court, at least having a significant say. But he didn't even mention him as someone who would play make for them. Obviously, he will. But you've got Zion, he mentioned. You've got Brandon Ingram and Drew Holiday. Holiday might be traded, which could be a reason the Pelicans would incorporate Lonzo a bit more now. But you've got those three players that were mentioned and JJ Redick before they even mentioned Lonzo, who was their chief creator last year. It's just a bit weird, don't you think? Now, I think Detroit could capitalize on this and maybe make a trade for him. And maybe that trade would involve the seventh overall pick and a future second round pick. And why would I want them to trade for Lonzo over this year's point guards, over this year's draft prospects? Well, you look at this draft, we know that there's unlikely to be a superstar or at least a clear superstar, someone that you can bank on saying, He's going to be a star. He's going to be an all-star, a superstar level player like we had in last year's draft, like we're likely to have in next year's draft. So you don't have someone that you know is going to be a great franchise player. What you have in Lonzo is you know someone who's going to be a very good player. I think he's a very good point guard already. Top five passer in the league, I'd say an all defensive type player, someone who can knock down catch and shoot threes and did so very well throughout the season, apart from the last bit in the bubble. But the bubble was very weird. The Pelicans just didn't seem organized. They didn't seem like they wanted to be there. It was just a strange situation as a whole. But as a whole, Lonzo has all the pieces that you would want in a point guard and in a point guard particularly for the Pistons. And I think he fits the Pistons in particular because of this. What do you want around Lonzo? You want shooters. What do you want around any good point guard? You want shooters, someone who can find the open man, someone who can get the ball moving and someone who can create offense. You've got Luke Kennard. He's a 40% three-point shooter. He's a sniper. You've got Sfi Mikhailuk, who really came along towards the end of the year. He's a 40% three-point shooter. He's definitely a sniper. You've got Tony Snell, and you've got Langston Galloway, two older guys, two more role players that I don't know are going to be in the future of Detroit's plans, but at the moment, they're on the roster. They're 40% three-point shooters as well. That's four on the team, and then you have two guys that stretch the floor. Not many teams have a four and a five that can both consistently knock down the three ball in Christian Wood and Blake Griffin. This all makes for a team full of shooters and surrounding Lonzo with shooters is a dangerous sight. And another thing that they have going for them is if they sign Christian Wood, which isn't guaranteed, he's got a lot of options. He might not sign with the Pistons, but if they do sign Wood, what is he great at? He's a great lob threat. He's great getting out in transition. Who is one of the best lob passers in the league? Maybe the best lob passer in the league. Yes, he's that good. 
Lonzo Ball. He's going to find Christian Wood on so many lobs, and he's just going to increase that dynamic. That dynamic would have a very Zion-like dynamic. Obviously, he's not the player Zion is, but in terms of athleticism, in terms of going up and getting lobs, he's as good as there is, really, in the league. He's that good at doing that. And then he can stretch the floor. He can do a number of things. But Lonzo's someone who could really activate C. Wood and make him even better than he was towards the end of the season. And then another thing to note, there's just a lot of factors that I think Lonzo really fits this team perfectly. Look at Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin is one of the best post players in the league. Even if he comes back from an injury, even if he's less explosive, Blake is someone that you need to double team in the post. Otherwise, he's going to score every time. So what's crucial for your team when you have a big man that needs to be double teamed? You need shooters. It's what the Nuggets have with Jokic. It's what teams look to do with Giannis. It's what those kind of teams want. And what Lonzo is, he's a very capable catch and shoot guy. And that's important for your point guard when you have Blake in the post. It means if they're going to double team him, they're going to have to live with the consequences of someone who's around 40% from catch and shoot range being one of the targets. You've also got Luke. You've got Sfi Mikhailuk. You've got a number of these guys, like I mentioned, are around 40% from catch and shoot range. And then are you going to double team Blake and leave one of these guys open? It doesn't seem like a high percentage play. You leave Blake in the post one-on-one, -on -one, that's barbecue chicken. If I've ever seen it, never seen someone guard him one-on-one -on -one in the post. But as a whole, when you look at this Detroit roster, what do you think of as the most important things to change? People would say everything. This roster sucks. That's not quite true. I don't believe that. I mean, if the Detroit Pistons made trades and got rid of Blake, if they lost Christian Wood, well then yes, it would be quite a disappointing roster as well as Derrick Rose. But at the moment, they still have those players. You've still got D-Rose, who's going to come off the bench and give you like 17 to 18 points a night and five assists. That's as good a six man as you have in the league. You're going to have Christian Wood, who really came on as a five, who can stretch the floor, who can give you 15 to 20 points a night. He's improving on the defensive end, and he's just a very up-and-coming guy that you could see becoming really good. You've got Blake Griffin, who was an all-NBA player before he got injured, and I think he can get back to something around to that mark around the 22 and five guy who's one of the best playmakers in the league at his position a very capable three-point shooter and just does a lot of things for the team you've got those three guys that are veterans and are very good players that at the very least make this team solid and then you've got Luke Kennard who came along at the beginning of the season before getting injured he was averaging around 16 and five he's capable in the pick and roll as a second to third ball hands like he's one of the best shooters in the league and I could see him averaging close to 20 points a game at his peak this isn't even his peak and he was averaging around 16 a game giving you 30 some nights He's a very good player. You've got Sfi Mikhailuk, who's a knockdown shooter. Sekou Dumboy is coming through. Bruce Brown coming off the bench is a Marcus Smart type guy. He'll lock up your opposition's best guard. And he did so against Kyrie Irving, James Harden. He progressed as a three-point shooter, as a playmaker, as a rebounder. He's a very solid player. You've got Langston Galloway, Tony Snell, solid players. This team is a lot better than people give it credit for. And they still have a bit of money to go for in free agency, even if they re-sign C. Wood. That's the kind of thing they've got going for them. This team is very solid and very underrated in my opinion. I think at the very least, there would be a 7th to 8th seed in the East if everyone stayed healthy. It's a big if, but that's the if that I have over them. If they stayed healthy, they're a good team, a much better team than people give them credit for. And then you bring in Lonzo Ball, who fills the needs that they have. Their needs are defense and playmaking. They've got two good playmakers on the starting lineup at the moment in Blake and Luke Kennard. You're likely to have Derek Rose and Bruce Brown coming off the bench, two other solid playmakers. But what you need alongside Luke Kennard to keep him on the floor is a defensive specialist. What you're bringing in with Lonzo is a defensive specialist. You've got a very good offensive player in Kennard next to him, and Lonzo can kind of fill in for the holes that he has defensively. If you bring in Lonzo, who can shoot, who can defend, who can pass. He fills every three needs that the Pistons have at the point guard position. Something I don't know if anyone in the draft fills at this point in time. You've got guys like Killian Hayes, Lamelo that could potentially shoot, that could potentially pass, that could potentially defend, but none of these guys do it as good as Lonzo. I don't know why you'd be more interested in those guys than bringing in someone who's more mature and someone that's already proven at the NBA level that he can at the very least be a very solid player. Now, from the Pelicans' perspective, why would they do it? Well, I think they would do it because they made those interesting comments around him not really being utilized in the offense. So if you're not really going to utilize him in the offense, why not trade him for a seventh overall pick and then pick up a Patrick Williams or someone that you know can play that three and D type role and then bring in a second round pick for next year. And if you think the Pistons are going to be bad, then you're looking at something in the 30s. That's a pretty good return for someone that was a second overall pick and considered actually a poor second overall pick. Someone that you would think in the redraft would go around five or six and you're getting that back. That seems like a good return for the Pels. Now, Pistons fans might not agree with me. 
I think Lonzo is just someone that you know is guaranteed to be a good player. He already is a good player. And I think more importantly, when I look at the weaknesses of the Pistons, I can't think of anyone who actually fills those weaknesses better, particularly at the price you can get him at, particularly someone who's still young. He's 23. He's still young. But even if this was where he capped out at, this is someone that fits what this team needs. And if you're going to keep Canard for a while, if you're going to keep Blake Griffin, if you're going to keep Christian Wood, if you're going to keep all these three-point shooters like Sfi Mikhailuk, why not bring in someone that can facilitate for them? Why not bring in someone that can make up for some of those defensive weaknesses that Sfi and Luke Kennard have? And why not bring in someone that is also a very solid three-point shooter, better than any of the other point guards in the draft, at least at the high end, apart from Tyrese Halliburton, who doesn't quite have the same defensive chops, which is why I think Lonzo might be a better option. And another thing why the Pelicans might be interested in trading him, he is a restricted free agent, so they still will have the rights to go for him first. But in terms of if they think this is the right time to get the highest value for him, if they think that he's not the future point guard going forward, which really that's what it boils down to. If they don't think he's going to be their future point guard, why would they keep him? And if Stan Van Gundy just sees him as a catch and shoot guy, I don't know if they see him as the future guy, particularly as someone who's going to be asking for a lot of money coming into next year. You're going to have to pay Brandon Ingram. You're going to pay Zion eventually. You're going to pay a number of these guys. I just think it makes sense for both teams. And I think for the Pistons, this is my ideal trade package. This is my ideal trade situation. I would prefer Lonzo over anyone in this draft, and I would prefer it over moving up in the draft because you'd have to give up an asset to get to number two, to get to number one, to get an unknown player that we don't know is going to be any better than Lonzo Ball. And more importantly, that I don't think fits the team as well as Lonzo. I don't think any player in this draft fits the Detroit Pistons as well as Lonzo Ball, given all the reasons I told you, given his defense, given his playmaking, given his shooting. I think Lonzo is the perfect fit. I think the Detroit Pistons should really try to make it happen. I think it would be a great signing. I think it would be a great trade. Now, it's probably not as exciting as trading up for LaMelo because it's the unknown of bringing in a LaMelo, an Anthony Edwards, a Tyrese Halliburton, a Killian Hayes, all of these guys. It's the unknown of potentially getting someone that could be a superstar when you probably don't think Lonzo is going to be a superstar given what he's done at this point in his career, you think he's probably, at best, probably going to be around an all-star, a three- or four-time all-star, which would be great for the Pistons. I think that'd be great. But you have the potential of getting Lamelo, who people think could maybe be a superstar player, a transformative player, when you're bringing in Lonzo, who's going to be a good player. This would be my perfect trade for the Pistons. And I think for Lonzo Ball fans, you should be excited. This would be a situation where he would have more of the ball in his hands, where he would get a number of opportunities off the catch and shoot, where he would be able to get to the rim because you've got players stretching the floor at all positions. You don't have guys like Zion and Derek Favors clogging the rim. He's going to have a free lane to get to the rim and probably do so more effectively than he did in New Orleans and try to get that game going. He's got a number of things going from if he moves to Detroit. If you did enjoy the video and if you made it to the end of this video after I rambled for all that time about why Lonzo's the perfect fit for Detroit, then drop a like on the video. That would be appreciated. Also, you may as well sub if you did enjoy the video as well because there's plenty more of this content coming. So do that and I'm out. That's pretty much all I've got to say. Have a good one. Bye.